I'm so happy we have a Flavia. <laughs> oh God, me too. <laughs> okay. It says preparing to live stream, but I think it already is because it says that while well, it already is doing that because <laughs> yay YouTube. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, super stickers is enabled. What is the super sticker, people? Hi, YouTube. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I don't know what a super sticker is. <laughs> it's there now, Flavia. <laughs> okay, I'm just... Copying. I'm here live with Lightworkers 613. Uh, we've been colleaguing together, doing channelings on each of our Patreon channels for, oh my gosh, a long time now. I don't it? know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I'm here with the lovely Christ Conscious channel, uh, Annie Rios. She's incredible. You will love her absolutely as much as I do, I promise. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, I love you too. I'm happy to be here too. Annie is going to be, we are doing a duo, duo channeling today uh, with Annie representing Mary Magdalene and any of the voices of the Magdalene that wish to come through her, which normally do. And I am representing the voice of Lilith. That'll be fun. <laughs> oh, let's see um, if she's going to be good today. <laughs> yeah, if she's going to behave. <laughs> I have a little bit of a fiery Mary Magdalene today, too. So, uh, so that will <laughs> <I'll> be interesting. <laughs> yeah, always fun. Flavia is just sharing the Almost links on our done. Patreon so yeah. everyone can join. Are you doing the sharing screen stuff? Oh, the side by side one. Yeah, I need yeah. to do that. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wore my Lilith symbol today, even though you can't see it. Um, Ooh. You see? There's just a moon. What, what is it yeah, in I, it? I can't see it. It's too oh, white. It's a moon face. But it's probably mm. too bright. But... Love it. Moon I have face? my Mary Magdalene crystal too that I got in France. Yeah. <laughs> You said the, a moon face? Moon face. Oh. I didn't know it was her symbol. One of, yeah. one of my favorites. Why okay. would that be? <laughs> Flav is sharing it everywhere she can. She's just I like sharing on this face like, like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we are all set. <laughs> I think they don't have video of me, but I think that... On chat, they do have video of me. Everyone can see me, right? I'm watching YouTube chat, so if you can't see me, can you okay. know that you can't see me? Med typer Flavia. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> you're already getting a nickname. Uh, yeah, tons of people would have said something already. We have so many people here. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Alana Heavenly. Very another very powerful channel, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I love her. Love every time that she goes on screen with you. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Hi, Tanea. Yeah, they're saying they can see us. Good. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So oh, I just got this really powerfully scientific channeling, like just now with like Tesla and oh my god, Beck and all these beings. So I'm like, <laughs> like ch chilling again, Taking right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love science, so I get super excited. I'm geeking out, so I'm like really excited. And I'm like, so let's talk about great waves and da 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 and gamma and this and that. And I'm just like, okay, oh, <laughs> now Pamela's going to stop geeking out over science. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> that sounds sounds very exciting for whoever <laughs> understands the thing, <laughs> you know, which is not always my case. Not always. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll be just, so people on YouTube knows, I'll be reading questions from Patreon, from Pamela's Patreon. So if you want to ask a question, you can join there from any tier. And there's a post where you can post all of your questions and then I'll try to read as many as I can. <laughs> it's... Pamela Erling, oh, patreon.com slash Pamela Erling. There are three A's. Yeah, Pamela, Pamela uh, uh, Erling. A-A. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Do they want to share anything before we start? Lilith or Mary Magdalene? Get her started. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, it's the same message that I got this morning. So it's about peaceful energy mm -hmm. and how peaceful energy involves trust and acceptance. And <clears throat> she said, humans are trained in their brains to, in their bodies as well, to look out here and she goes like that, for everything um, that they need in here. When they want to feel good in here, they look out here. You know, whether it's circumstances or habits or people, it's about looking for that out here perpetually. And she says, as long as there is any amount of energy within you, which you are striving to get from, any perceived thing or person or circumstance, something that you lack within yourself in here, in your body and mind and heart, then you don't feel free. So this is the block to freedom. And so many people are claiming that they want peace and freedom. These are the two things that she says people want at all times, peace and freedom. I just want peace. I just want to feel free. Those are the things that we say to ourselves as a human collective. But we keep seeking it from out here, what we're lacking in here. And we can't know freedom if we keep doing that. So we need to seek in here at all times. And if we continue to seek out here, and that's where we start, at least use out here as a reflection of coming back in here. That is so interesting because Mary Magdalene woke me up today talking about the law of reflection. Of course. <laughs> so everything that you see outside of you that perhaps you don't like or triggers you, it is because it leaves, there's something that you're not loving inside of you. So it, you can like, the way that she expresses it to me is like you can fix it by loving yourself and accepting yourself exactly as you are in everything, every part of you, all of, all of you that is human and all of you that is spiritual as you call, there is no separation between the two. So very interesting that they both had similar things to say. Oh, it's often the same with us. Yeah. <laughs> we find out later, like, yes, you told us this well in advance. <laughs> yeah. Channels, we just show up. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to our first question from Haiyan. She asks, what is expansion? Does God know everything? And if so, why do we get more experience on Earth and other planets? So much being said, I'm just trying to grasp on. <laughs> I feel sometimes like I'm... Uh, falling on her coattails a little bit, just hanging on as she flies. Yes. <laughs> um, so the karmic wheel is always turning. She's giving me this image of a, what appears to be a uh, windmill or water mill, you know, like, a, like a water mill, moving water over and over again. And then, um, you know, you have the wheel that's moving into you know, the river below, okay? So we'll just do a little diagram. So this is gonna be better this way. This is the water. This is the ever expanding motion of bodies, okay? This is the stuff we're in right now. This is the wheel of karma, okay? So you have little pockets of karma and you call these lives. <laughs> And it is moving. Can everybody see how it is moving in this direction? And when you're going in this direction and you're going down, 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 everything appears to be hard and you're like, I'm gonna die when that water happens. I'm gonna drown. <laughs> you know, and this body is no more and it falls off this little wheel into the water and returns to source again and again and again. It's gonna be bad, but it isn't. And then we realize it isn't. And then we come back up Things are starting to feel good. We're starting to remember ourselves. We get here to this point. I call this uh, realization, whatever you want to call it, zero point energy, some scientists are now calling it. 
And you come to this point, you're like, oh, I realized that all this was me and all this was me and every little pocket of me that ever existed and every fractal of God is me. Oh my God. So then the little you dives off. Let's do a face dive for the stick man. And he's like, <laughs> Wee, look, there's my hair. <laughs> and he jumps off and, and then he just plummets into the water again. And then there's wheel after wheel after wheel of that expansive process. And that is the best definition that I can give you right now of expansion is that you are collapsing into yourselves, into, not up here, not out here, into yourselves. The kingdom of God, Lilith says, are within you, all 33. All 18,000 worlds, according to Halal and Yeshua, are all one universe. And we realize that when that wheel comes front and center in our lives. And we're scared because we look down at that water and we're like, shit looks deep. <laughs> it, looks like it looks scary. There's logs and other stuff floating, right? <laughs> so, just grabbing on as we go along. But no matter what, that wheel of time kind of captures us back up again and we choose to jump off. We choose it every single time. And then eventually we perceive that nothing we've ever experienced has been a separative point. And that is that point of you know, zero point energy when everything that we think is expanding and collapsing is all the same thing anyway. So according to Lilith, God wants to see itself over and over and over again so the light can't be seen without darkness without it you would just be like you know if i had all my lights on in my office right now it would just be blurring out my face and you wouldn't see any of my features at all so everything that you're afraid of this alleged darkness all the cosmos that are there in the space what if all of that that you think is out here is actually just a reflection of you in here. And you are created from that. You are stars covered in skin. Quote from Lilith there. <laughs> Love that. Yes, that's a beautiful exploration. In, in order to see yourselves in various ways. And it would be the same as I work a lot in alchemy with these sacred shapes, viewing this side of you, 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 and then going, oh my gosh, look how it it's me. <laughs> <laughs> That is expansion in the most simple and complicated derivative. Love it. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. Shall I move on or make Mary Magdalene want to stretch? No, everything on? that she was saying, then Pamela said. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so the next question is from Isabella. She asks, why do I continually trigger people not always in a positive way? It's like you either like me or not. Some, sometimes it upsets me, but I don't react. But I feel hurt inside. I just want people to feel better. How can I change the way they react towards me? Yeah. Uh, Mary Magdalene is talking about how you perceive yourself in every situation and that's what you are seeing uh, coming back to you in a way. Can you just repeat the, the last part, please? Yes. They either like me or not. How yeah, can I change? change? Oh, yeah, that's the part that she wanted me to. Uh, what is it that you, why is it that you feel that there is something in you that I need to change to be accepted and to be loved by others? So it is not so much something regarding how they will perceive you, but more how you perceive yourself. Because in this uh, kind of situation, you are seeing something played out for you that seems to be outside of you seems to be someone else so you can perhaps pay attention in something that you don't love or accept within yourself so why is it that you feel like you need to change to to meet someone else's um expectations of you for example and how does it translate to you in physicality you know, in your day-to-day -day life. So she's constantly talking about self-love and how that can just bring all of that um, awareness of God within you and God within others. And also she's talking about your role as a catalyst uh, and how it can represent that to others as well, because they are seeing something in them 
that you are triggering for them so you can help them uh, through that or accept that or love that. So it's one of your roles is what she's saying. One of your roles here as a human being, it should be the catalyst for other people. Uh, and it's a good thing and it's a, a selfless thing also, but it's very important to remain in your power and remain uh, loving yourself and accepting yourself through those things because it's, trust me, it's not always easy <laughs> when you just trigger people and don't even know why and they just seem to not like you that day you know because you triggered something in them because that's one of your roles so loving yourself and accepting yourself as that and as all of the other facets of you is what can give you that peace of mind of knowing that it doesn't matter how they perceive you because that's just a role that you're playing for each other as different uh, fractals of god you know in an individuality Mm. Um, Lilith basically said the same thing. She said you could possibly have an attachment to a reaction from people. Mm -hmm. She's going to give you some inquiries that help. So are you addicted to people feeling better about themselves? And what would this say about you? Do you have an expectation of them feeling better about you or about themselves? Um, does it make you feel better when they feel better? Why? So she wants you to kind of go into inquiry with these questions. Next question is from Alana. She asks, is Mary Magdalene and Mother Mary the same being? They often, often feel the same to me in my version of this dream. For me, they are different signatures of energy from the same collective. So I think that that's why people... Uh, perceive them as being the same. I see them as being different beings, but they kind of represent so many of the same things that they kind of feel the same. What about you? Um, yes. And to me, when I view essences that are part of the same collective, it looks a little bit like, oh gosh, me and drawing again. I just have to do it today. If this is a Russian doll and this mm -hmm. um, Mother Mary here, um, the next essence that is born within that and of that would be Magdalene. You know, you know, and somewhere out here is like Lilith, you know, but it, they're all, if you just lift things up, you'll notice they all are a part of each other. So it's impossible to be separate, but the essence does have a unique flavor and a unique message. Each of them have different principles and technologies uh, that they're here to help you expand within. You'll notice that. And you just feel differently um, when you're channeling each of them. Um, Mary Magdalene um, is a little nicer to me. <laughs> than Mother Mary? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, than Lilith. But okay. Yeah, but yeah. Mother Mary I actually connect to very strongly. Uh, the fractal of her that I connect to strongly is Miriam. Yes. Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> and she's so peaceful to me, Mother mm -hmm. Mary. The way that she comes, it's like when she comes, I, I feel sleepy at the same time. It's like, oh my God, just hold mm -hmm. me. It's like, like, like the, the warmth in Mary Magdalene is more of that power. But the way that she says things, it's just so loving so and lovely. so easy to understand. So. I love them both. <laughs> Same. Next question we have is from MC. She says, I have always seen images when I close my eyes, but they fade quickly. So hard to tell who or what they are. I see Ashwa's image most of the times and sometimes Mary Magdalene. I have also seen galactic or alien beings. And also sometimes when Pam, I watch Pamela's channelings, I see her face change to alien-like. Are these my imagination? Yes, because everything is your imagination and you are creating everything at all times. So everything that you can perceive, everything that you can look at right now, that's Mary Magdalene talking. She just jumped in, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, everything that you can see and perceive and feel and touch and everything at all you are creating and your imagination is part of that. So uh, she's talking about how we tend to separate and to think that, oh, if we are imagining something, it's not real, but what is within this dream? So you are creating everything at all times. So give your imagination more credit is the first thing that she said. And the second is you keep seeing fractals of yourself and fractals of yourself that keep showing 
to you, that something that you achieve to be. So they are just presenting themselves to you so you can see that you are that already. It's just a matter of awareness. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And Lilith says, you know, it all boils down to the question that you all have, is it real? And what is real? <laughs> Why is this question so relevant? Let me make it clear for you. Nothing on earth is real, including you. Does that make you feel better? No, it absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> so you are here to learn powerfully expansive lessons within your unreality. You're in a veil of illusion, but does, does that mean that um, we don't learn and we stop living and we stop creating? No. Of course, what you see is real to you in these moments and you um, can give it just enough reality to create within it, but not so much reality that it absolutely controls you and you over identify with this illusion. Where's your balance? Find your balance point. Very important message. Yeah. Next question is from Sean. <clears throat> Being human is quite an experience for us. So dense and dualistic, so fantastic and awful, so challenging and rewarding. I came and played Lilith, learned many lessons. I'm tired and want to retire as a human, at least for a while, a little longer. Can you help me, please? Here she comes, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 don't burst out. Um, <clears throat> <sighs> what are you tired of? If you were tired, your body wouldn't be here. Neither would your mission, neither would your purpose, neither would love and sex and ice cream and creativity or peace and rest and joy and anything that is the result of such reward. So what, when you say I am tired and wish to retire as a human, challenge your ego's presence in this statement. If you were tired, you would not be here, you would be at rest. So the reason why you are not at rest in the body creatively is that you do not provide the peace beyond this illusion that is necessary for you to create tirelessly. Give yourself that permission to rest and to stop fooling yourself by saying you're tired of expansion because it is untruth and ridiculously absurd even. If you were tired, you would be dead at the end. If you wanna be tired, you're going to be dead. She threw up her arms. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> yes. Um, next question from Maria. Could Lilith or Mary Magdalene comment on this time in December when in the Northern Hemisphere, the seeds are planted in dark ground, perhaps under a blanket of snow? It feels to me like it's the quiet period before birth in the spring. Any comments on this? It is the quiet period to go within deeply. Earth gives you no choice at this time, but to go deeply within yourselves for physical and mental rest. Now is time to place to rest your thoughts. Your thoughts are tiring. And of course, this tires out the body. Of course, the earth doesn't spring forth with seeds that are flourishing at this time when the thoughts are still resting and reseeded and reborn, emerging from earth in the spring once more, when your emotions have sprung forth more clearly in a way that you can accept. It is a cycle, not just of Gaia, but of your minds. It is the death of ego, the peace that follows in spirit and the rebirth again, perhaps to be utilized differently in the spring. Yes, Mary Magdalene just said, enjoy that, enjoy that time yeah. and be present with yourself. Next question is from Dan. What is the most important message that Mary Magdalene wanted to tell the world by her presence on earth on that lifetime? And what is schools of moral force <laughs> present what? now she approves of and or are more close to her vision? Okay. 
she's talking about her demonstration as a powerful woman in that time and how challenging it was for her and how accepting she needed to be towards herself and how much she needed to love herself through all of that because she was such a pioneer in everything that she experienced in her lifetime and she had a lot of other women to support her and a lot of other men also to support her in her journey but she wasn't uh, she, she didn't she's talking about how she didn't get as famous as Yeshua because of all the patriarchy and all of that and she understands that it was perfect because that's the cycle of earth and the cycle of us and how we decided to perceive all those things in this timeline that we are currently on and how that served us and how her uh, being as the, as that kind of a role model uh, is helping us so much right now. So she's also talking about all of the practices that she did as a priestess of Isis and how that is not even covered it's not even like a, the tip of the iceberg that we know about all of that alchemy and all of that. So that's what she is willing to bring more of now to the public because it was kind of like this, those mystery schools and all, the, all of that because women and alchemists have been uh, persecuted for so long. So she said that that's the other thing that she wanted to come here and to, to show that you can be strong and you can show yourself even without fear of persecution, you know, even if she suffered a lot of that and she went through everything in the body, she went through the dark night of a soul and, and she, she's like this, uh, it's like a, 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 what she shows me is like she's a mirror of us, you know, and what we, we aim to be and how strong we aim to be. So she's showing that when she's showing herself in the mirror, she transforms into any, you know, so she, I am you. So you can be all of that. So that's what she wanted us to, to gather from her experience on earth as Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does she tell you anything else? No, I was just listening to her come through you and <laughs> when you said priestesses priestesses because every time i say the word wrong <laughs> um, um next question is from ludmila she asks why do my children express their violence much more with me than with my with their father i feel overwhelmed by the power of their violence Sometimes the predestined memories that you're carrying at the cellular level can come face forward in full vision, undeniably, to the extent that you believe in the veil of illusion and then it owns you. You succumb to the insanity of such a belief in unreality. You are here not to succumb to the belief because it held power in the past, but to recognize it and to break the cycle karmically for your mothers, for your sisters, for your daughters. Break that cycle between yourselves and your children, but do not believe in its untruth. There is only one truth and Halal has told you this, and it's love. Anything that isn't love isn't truth, that is the end. So why do you believe in something this powerfully? You do not need to. Believers are innocent. You are innocent, but forgive the fact that you believe this so violently. For in such a believing, you too are creating and perpetuating the cycle of what people had mislabeled and misidentified as sin. You have simply missed the mark. You believe in attack, therefore you defend. Perhaps you turn the situation over into an attack upon others, perhaps not either yet, either so. The cycle perpetuates itself. It only made itself aware in your veil of illusion because your genetics spoke so loudly to you. You were carrying forth the cycle to clear it, not to join it and perpetuate it further. Jump off of the wheel of karma forgive it and let it go and refuse to believe anyone's projection of anger towards you. You know what's true, you know what isn't. I have given you my guideline. If you refuse to believe this, then the insanity will perpetuate into the next cycle 
of mother-daughter, mother-son, mother-child as a whole. You are the parent. You must stop the insane belief. It is your responsibility. Thank you. Next question is from Pamela. She asks, what is the energy of charisma? Okay, I'm getting different answers. So I'm getting an answer for charisma in the veil of illusion and the forgetting and this unreality as she calls it. And then I'm getting a different word. So there's a difference between charisma and passion. There's a charismatic leader. This you typically will see in unreality and your veils of forgetting. You will see in politics, you will see in religions. You will see in all insane constructs and you will see this around your world. This charisma it is manipulative in nature. Charisma, by the way, is to get you to succumb to someone else's power and to forget your own. That is the energy of charisma. It is low in its signature and frequency on the scale of consciousness. It is a very low density technology. It is useful in the forgetting for those who wish to manipulate. But then what? Do you, if you manipulate passionately for the good, and the greater good of leading humanity back into their own innate goodness, then charisma is useful. But if you use it to manipulate for your own purposes, for pride, for power over, to be in power over of others, to place them in the constructs of power under, which is common in your political and religious structures, then of course it isn't useful. Charisma can turn into deep passion. And it can be ethical or unethical. It can be high density or low, low density. It is simply a personality tool. All leaders must possess it. It is how they use it that would most apply to whether or not you should believe them. Never follow them. Follow yourselves. If they lead you back to yourselves, then this is the power of an ethical leader. And if they do not, then they are manipulating you. A follow-up question by Irimu. Uh, he asked, uh, where does this land in the Haw Hawkins scale? For that, I have to bring him in. He's going to start drawing. <laughs> <laughs> so you have things way down here, you know, like apathy, by the way. He's updated the scale of consciousness at least three times since his passing, at least to me as a channel. And that's just my unique take. You know, and then you go into other things like shame and guilt. You go into some other things like anger. You go into agitation. Eventually, you'll get to this space of neutrality, which is about midway through, you know, balance even greater. So it takes a degree of agitation energy in order to be neutral enough to balance charisma and to use charisma for balance. But most leaders on your planet currently do not get past agitation energy. So it is somewhere, uh, in, you notice that politics invigorate your fear and anxiety and uh, anxiety is somewhere up in here between anger and agitation on the scale of consciousness. <laughs> So when you have anxiety, you're gonna get agitated. When you get agitated, you're gonna do something about it. So that's not always bad, Lilith says, when you face the fear in this way. Get fearful enough, maybe you'll get pissed. <laughs> yes. Place, and it goes up here. Then perhaps eventually you will balance it out ethically and go up here, okay? Sorry for the scribble scrabble. So to answer your question, it really depends upon the ethics of the person. It can be anywhere, but it takes an anger energy to be charismatic. 
You have to get pissed about something. You have to get on fire about something. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Marisol asks, <clears throat> just lost it. Okay, how does Mary Magdalene show herself to her? She's showing me the mirror again. So she shows herself to you as you, first of all, but she's saying that you want a more specific answer. So she'll give it to you. She says that she's a part of you as she's a part of everything. And she's showing me images again. I don't know why she keeps showing me like a pyramid, maybe it represents something to you. So what, I don't know, maybe when you see that or when that shows up, maybe it showed up in a dream. I don't know. When they tell me stuff that make no sense to me at all, I just tell people because God knows what 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 it <laughs> I just spoke <laughs> I just spoke a little bit of Portuguese in, in between. <laughs> but so subtle though. <laughs> but yeah, so she keeps showing me like a pyramid. So anything that you feel that is related to that, there's a lot of Mary Magdalene there, but you have a lot of her essence in you. So yeah, that's what I'm getting at least. And the pyramid, Lilith also reminds you that the pyramid rest represents the aspect of the sacred three, which is very yeah. powerful, you know, here, here, and here at this level, you have mind and body here and spirit here, you know, and the entirety of the pyramid structure is um, that essence of soul and what it creates. Um, so. Yeah makes a lot of sense with all the alchemy so however that uh comes out to you in your life that's how he she's showing up to you at least um rhythm is asking dear magdalene what do you feel of the fka twigs song named after you named after you I personally had never heard it so Neither. no idea let's see what she thinks she thinks she's smiling very quietly smiling so i think that she kind of likes it and she's talking about how the awakening of the feminine in all beings not only women but all beings and how balancing it out with the with the masculine is something that we've been working on on what we call this year and the past two years i think and now it's like everything is coming into a, a, a uh, it's like all these culminating and, and like next year things will be more balanced so she's talking about how that th there's a, a bit of that representation in the song but I have no idea what it is about so I'm gonna have to check that out <laughs> oh what is it again what is the song F FKA Twigs is the artist mm -hmm. and I, I imagine the song is called Mary Magdalene or something like that um Lilith says also that it's about a deep internalization factor of what society does when we internalize their beliefs about our body. So something. Mm -hmm. like yeah, I feel a little bit like the, of anger, you know, like. Yeah, you too. I'm getting yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we are done and, and she's like, I don't know. Yeah. I, now I want to hear the song. <laughs> I know. I'm like, go, 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 right go. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna find out. Sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, next question we have is from Don. He says, since beings come to earth for various life lessons, they come in male and female bodies as needed for such. Therefore, I, have I at times also been one of the inner circle of girls who practices spiritual alchemy? Are there any significant events you could help me recall that would boost my awareness for harassing feminine har harnessing sorry feminine energy for harmony and balance there's so many questions within questions can i can i get it split yeah. yes. one because i did get one answer to like why um <clears throat> he may feel that way because he's been uh done has been a part of the deep priestess circles um that occurred um you know, in all of our times, you know, together, yeah. we all, all three of us have had times within the same priestess circles over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. I was there, you know, as someone like deeply supportive and writing primarily, like a lot of writing. Yes, I see that too. And I saw him covering his head and Lilith said, that's why you always cover your head, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I don't know, like he does that as a joke or something. She says sometimes that he covers his head as a joke to people. Um, and she said, that's why you do that because it's a little bit serious, but what are the other, um, what are the other questions? The other questions. Uh, are there any significant events you could help me recall that would boost my awareness for harnessing feminine energy for harmony and balance? Um, Mary Magdalene is talking about not using the past as something to work on or with right now. So balancing yourself right now, not trying to correlate to that so much or to give that too much uh, attention or just put too much energy in that because it's not, let's say, try to explain it in an easier way. Everything is happening right now, of course, but you are in this awareness as this being that you are. You can focus way more if you perceive as you being working with yourself right now, that being present, that being the present moment. So you can really uh, balance yourself, you know, that way, instead of trying to look back in what you call your past and try to bring something, because she's saying that it works for a few people, but the feeling that she gives me is like, it's not going to work too well for you because you already are in that state in which you can understand that everything is right now. So what can you do right now in your physicality as done to bring that energy into your body? Not only bring that energy into your body, bring that into your awareness because it is there in you already. And you express that in so many forms that you are not even thinking of you know the love and the care that you pour into others you know so understanding maybe that's the point because she's talking about how you are a very brain person and it really helps you to cognize things and understand with the human mind so maybe trying to understand a little better uh, mm -hmm. the nuances of those energies the masculine and the feminine and just being aware of how they are already playing a role in you in your physicality right now so if you want to increase something let's say that you want to work with them a little more there are so many tools right now that you can focus on to uh, become more aware of that energy and how it uh, translates to you in your physicality because it's very personal too and and it's not only like, oh, we can uh, give them names and, and give them labels, like the, the true energies, because they work so differently for everyone. So it's just a matter of being more aware of how that's playing now for you and what you want to work with right now. Yeah. And the tools that you could use that are at your disposal. You know, yes. Ani and Flavia teach a lot about these tools, you know, on their Patreon, you know, for Lightworkers 613. And, um, you know, crystals being a primary crystals, mm -hmm. um, happened to be a tool for mine for a very long time. And how I got into some of these remembrances because I'm a bit of a top down experiencer. So I was born with just all this stuff, but I really didn't have memories per se. I just had gifts that I knew worked. So I didn't need memories, which is evidential proof right there in my life that, um, <clears throat> that it works without the memory, right? Yeah and breath and meditation and deep spiritual awakening caused me to have access to these tools without the memory. But then I started to use the tools just because they feel good with intentions and breath and just feeling out how my body wanted to work somatically with the tools and I began to create grids. So mm -hmm. this is an example of one of my more powerful grids that represents um, some of my times. This is Lemuria. Um, and this is Atlantis. So yes. these are just doing this like really, really, this was um, a temple that I was actually trapped in, in Lemuria. And I wanted balance. This represented the balance for the collectives of yeah. divine feminine, divine masculine. And I remember I was crying while I was doing all these little swirlies here with these crystals of these mm -hmm. amazonite and little connector points of Herkimer diamond, because it was like tunnels in Lemuria that I was trapped in and I couldn't get out. And my, all my people were trapped up in here. These are all bodies, you know, and I was trying to set them free, you know, and these, this represented Lemuria and the growth and the reblossoming. And this represented Atlantis and its structure and everything that I felt that was happening. Um, and then I wanted to connect everything and bring it and let it rise to higher consciousness. And I cried throughout this whole thing. This group took me like three hours to make, <clears throat> but the tools that you have access to you know, in today's day and time can be just incredible. So use those tools, use the alchemy teachings that Lightworker 613 has to offer you to be able to learn to make grids yourself, to be able to practice, you know, um, 
proper ethical tantra to be able to yes. practice uh, priestess mystery school alchemy for yourselves so that if, if there's something that you're that is meant to be uncovered um in your mastery mm -hmm. from the past and it will come um if it's not there what lilith has to say is that it's not there for a reason i couldn't have it i could not have my past life memories until i was about i want to say between 39 and 40. really i couldn't have them they were so traumatic and i had had enough trauma in this lifetime yeah. <laughs> So I just, my body couldn't handle it. So they didn't give it to me. So sometimes it's just trusting, uh, according to Lilith, that deep divine guidance that you're not, if it's not there, it's not for you right now. So why are we going and untapping our Kundalini? And then, you know, Lilith is like, why are you always, always wanting to play around with Kundalini? Leave Kundalini alone. Yes. <laughs> Leave your Kundalini alone, you know? Um, like, why are we so dependent upon like activating certain parts of ourselves um, what we just need to do is simply use the tools that are available to us and breathe and meditate and just see what comes and flow where energy goes that focus flows so just flow with that energy and just see what happens and what's meant to arise will arise she says yeah absolutely and i know that you like to work with the crystals in your body so she's talking about uh, placing the grids in your body so let's say that you want to do like in your chest or anything so whatever feels right to you at the moment so it's just a matter of trusting yourself and trusting that that guidance that is coming to you it's going to be so personal and we cannot give you the answer because you know it's your journey and in i feel like that that's another thing like Mary Magdalene is saying is that sometimes people come to us to get answers and we just give them more questions because mm -hmm. I don't feel like it, it's it's my place for example to just give someone like the answer you know and, and it won't come the higher self is not going to let me know because it's something within your journey for you to work on and, and it's not it wouldn't be nice of me to just give it to you so I feel like it's one of those things <laughs> and it can be a little catalyzing you know I know how Annie works and I can speak for her in this that she's very ethical about the channel answers that she will give you she will never give you any information that you cannot handle yeah. Um, and that's kind of the way for spirit as well, not just for spirit who works through ethical channels like Annie, but um, the way of spirit is to not give you downloads of information that you are not ready for. And it's just a trust factor. Um, yeah. So just be in the deep connected space of gratitude for where you are in your path and try to connect more deeply into your emotions because we are here according to both all the Magdalene, Lilith and Mary, we're here to master that. We're here to master mm -hmm. the heart. So all of this stuff that kind of comes along with it, it's great. And um, it, it can't be just the forefront of all of our expansion. For example, in yoga, I'm a yogi, um, there are eight limbs of yoga. And the tapas, which is um, basically the limb of yoga that is about your study and your discipline in your study and your reading of books and your using all these tools, it's only one branch. And it's rare that a guru will say, start with tapas. <laughs> uh, a guru will say, start with breath, you know, the pranayama. A guru will say, start with asana, you know, moving of the body um, and exercise, starting with pratyahara, you know, knowing when to draw in your energy or draw back from certain energies, which is, you know, in new age uh, communities, they call that frequency management or uh, psychic protection or shielding or those things. Those are just the same, uh, different words for the same thing. So if we kind of start there, you know, and make our practice about um, ourselves and our inner journey and use these tools to help with that, then that's what's going to be great. And that's what I love about, you know, Lightworkers 613 is that all those tools are there to guide you into that, into yourselves. And then what will arise will arise naturally. You won't have to ask them. You won't have to be like, hey, Annie and Flavia, like, what does this mean? You'll start to just know. Yeah. Just come to you. Exactly. And Mary was saying that it's very important to, to stop putting things in different degrees of mastery. You know, everything you are here to, if you believe that you're here to master something, uh, know that mastery is awareness. It is not something, not a way up a hill that you need to get there. You know, it's in you already. So to not, uh, set it in like a categories that, oh, this is better or that is better. Let's say the, the, all the branches of yoga, if you need to start in one, it's because your journey now is guiding you to do that. And that's what you wanted to come and hear and do in this physicality. It doesn't mean that if you start from what we call the top, you are uh, 
down the, the line, you know, so there is no hierarchy. That's what she's saying, you know, so being aware of that can really help because then you think like, you can see yourself as being one with everything instead of seeing yourself as being lower or higher than anything else in your practice at all. So she just wanted to throw that in, I think. <laughs> Many, Did you cry a little bit? I cried you look like you cried a little bit. <laughs> it was like a, a punch in my heart and melted the ice that was there. <laughs> Um, JJ asked, how can I get in tune with the abundance already in my life and therefore attract more of it? <laughs> my face when Lily comes through, she's like, <laughs> okay. Um, attention goes where focus flows. So, you know, the energy of all the attention and the focus of your lack is where you are right now. And that's where you are. So there are some interesting teachings that Lilith and Ra have been bringing through me recently that I'm gonna be putting on Patreon in the behind the scenes teachings this month in the Pearls of Grace, just kind of as I can. And it's about um, the law of embodiment, which is a part of law of attraction that is rarely discussed, you know, and it just, Really, like there's very few things I get triggered that really make me charismatic these days, but this is one of them. <laughs> because you go on YouTube and you type in law of attraction. Anybody can guess what you're going to get? Think it, believe it, see it, achieve it. <laughs> or sometimes they just simplify it. They're like, believe it, see it, achieve it, which sounds like a slogan on the back of a life coaching bumper sticker that they put on the back of your car somewhere, you know, or like corporate coaching or something where you're just looking to make a lot of money and not embodying the essence of what you want. Why do you want it? What does it feel like? How can you, how can you embody the essence and the feeling and the feeling signatures of that outcome in your life now? Because if you cannot embody it now, then everything that you're projecting forward is like trying to form a reference point to something towards something that you are not. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It, it just doesn't. So it, it's a real big trigger for me. You have to embody what you want and become it now. And now, am I going to tell you that means, you know, according to Lilith, be rich right now. It's not about how the tools, you know, the, the analogy that she gives me about this is when we focus on abundance, <clears throat> we can have a tendency based upon conditions, you know, condition programs and beliefs in today's society to look at the tool, you know, like the, the, the garden hoe or the rake, you know, or the tiller as being what we're looking for versus the seed, the crop, the plant, cultivating it, planting it deeply within the soil of our bodies and minds. And then if the seed is here, cultivating it with proper feelings, proper breath, proper emotional response and embodiment so that that seed becomes a tiny little stalk that bursts forth from the earth that is flourishing and nourishing, which most people are like, just give me the tool. The money is your tool. It helps you dig deep. It helps you weed the garden. It helps you, but it's you don't need it. Can you dig with your hands? Absolutely. You can dig, dig very deeply. I am a very hands-on gardener, by the way, when you see me garden, like I have very little tools. I don't use um, electronic machines. Like I am in the dirt. It's crazy. I love it. <laughs> it takes, it's time saving too, and, but it's incredible. <laughs> I'm talking to my plants and watering them myself. I don't use sprinklers. I'm a mess, you know? <laughs> but I know that it works. Yeah. So my plants always grow until the addition of the cat in my house, who is biting plants <laughs> currently. She's been biting Grace, my favorite plant. Grace has kitty bite marks on her now. Of course. So I have a bit of a block to abundance, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> <First block. laughs> yeah, it triggers me too. And Mary Magdalene was saying that it needs to become an emotion, a feeling, 
that's how you manifest it. And the best thing to use to manifest is gratitude. So what about you just being grateful for what you already have? Because we keep wanting more and more. If you want more, you think that you don't have it. So it comes from lack. And that's why it gets hard to, to manifest it. So, and she's talking about that. Yeah, we talk about uh, the thoughts because you can choose your thoughts and your thoughts can become emotions. So that's another process that you can take for yourself if you think that it's going to work. But as long as you are not embracing and embodying it, it gets really hard to manifest anything at all. Not only abundance, but anything that you feel like you don't have. So Yes. And, you know, and also another law that is a part of the law of attraction, according to Lilith, is the universal law of specificity. Do you see that anywhere out there on the internet? No. no. <laughs> Not to our alchemy classes, both mine and Annie's, all of these laws are discussed regularly here because we understand that the law of attraction is sort of a threefold principle. So you have it and within it, you have other laws like law of embodiment, law of reflection, um, you have the universal law of specificity. Those are within it. So it's like this. And you can't forget those other things. So for instance, within the universal law of specificity, you can't just say, Pamela wants a Lamborghini, which by the way, I shouldn't choose that. I'd actually choose like a Humvee or something, so, <laughs> or a Jeep of some kind. So uh, Pamela wants a fancy Jeep of some kind, right? And you know, what am I willing to do to get that? Like I still currently, you know, I'm looking at that and I'm like, what are my middle steps? What is the next most believable step for me to get there? You know, and I might look at that, not waiting on it and just saying, well, let me like pull out my vision board and, and see it and then believe it and then achieve it. <laughs> it's like, it's going to just come to me. <laughs> Without embodying it, without thinking about why I want it and what I might feel like and what, how I'm going to serve myself and my children and humanity with it. And I've got to start my storylines and my feelings and my embodiment, create your storylines yeah. of how you want it, why you want it, how are you going to serve with it? What, how does it embody your purpose? How does it help you embody your purpose? Okay. Um, why, when, where, why, how, all that, that's embodiment and then feel it. But more importantly, what is your next most action-based, believable step to achieve it? We can't just achieve it without asking ourselves, what do we need to do? You know, sort of that whole principle, faith without works is what? Yeah. <laughs> we can't just believe it. We actually have to do something about it. Exactly. That's how we create. Mm -hmm. We don't create just sitting here and waiting. For things to happen to us we go there and do something about it so we do <laughs> <laughs> next question is from Jimena she asks how can I better prepare my prepare for a meeting where I know I'm likely to be triggered so that I stay in love and good vibrations <laughs> is Lilith screaming at you too <laughs> <laughs> She's like a powerful vibration is a density. It is a state of thinking, a state of feeling, and then if you choose a state of action. So you get to choose your state of thinking about the power of this vibratory response. You get to choose what you're thinking, you get to choose what you're feeling, and you get to choose how you're going to respond in the situation. So why are you avoiding the power of what you're thinking? If it's a powerful frequency, it's there for a reason. Is there something you're missing in this by bypassing what you're actually feeling in its power? I need to move my legs. Oh my Sorry. <laughs> Am I distracting you? <laughs> you're distracting me, certainly. <laughs> my leg was trapped. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. <laughs> You've been sitting this whole time with your leg all curled up and Like, oh my God, yeah. I can't. <laughs> yeah. My food is so though. free right now. <laughs> You're going to get comfortable. I'm going to take off my shoes. We'll all be yes. <laughs> Let's. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I need some water. <laughs> Sorry for the crazy eyes on camera. You know. <laughs> I was like, what? The crazy <laughs> eyes. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> It's like it's literally bite, be, biting me. What is yeah. happening? No. <laughs> she kind of does sometimes. I just saw, I just saw that. <laughs> She's like biting me in the ass. Yeah, she does that sometimes, doesn't she? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
not helping Flavia with her uh, focus. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 sometimes I'm too visual, you know. <laughs> I can't <help> it. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Um. Scene. <laughs> um, Joan asked, <laughs> "What relationship did the channel Pamela have with the Ashwa when he was alive?" He's like, was? <laughs> I, I can't, that, that word. <laughs> I just can't. Um, <clears throat> you know, in which timeline? Yeah. You know, there's so many various timelines there's, and they're overlapping each other. You know, I have a hard time distinguishing that because there would be Yeshua ben Joseph, you know, in the timeline that I primarily knew Ani and Flavia, um, in which role you know, primarily I was a, um, what you would call it, Oracle or Rishi. So I was kind of a, a main channel, you know, who was a part of the Magdalene who would go around. And I was also a bit of a medicine woman. I was kind of one of those crazy medicine women who would, you know, go around bathing everyone's feet. Um, <laughs> Like take this nest. Hi, sir. Do you want? Yes. Do you want some herbs? Yes. That was me. Everybody's like, "Oh no, really, Joanna? You're really <laughs> telling us to eat some nasty shit again?" Um, that was me. Like Joanna said, "Eat it," you know. Or Johanna was my name then. Uh, so yeah, and then in another timeline, I was Miriam. I was an aspect of Mother Mary known as Miriam. So I was, I was a mom to him. Yeah. Um, in another aspect, I've been Anna, grandmother of Jesus. In another aspect, I um, <clears throat> have been uh, a, a student, a, a really strong student when he was Buddha Isa, you know, the Jesus of Tibet. You know, so I was a monk at that time yeah. in Tibet. So there's just, there's just many, 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 many stories. I could just, we would be here all the time. <laughs> Yes. I really liked uh, Johanna, that aspect the most. Who were we in that lifetime, or that timeline? Um, I knew Flavia as someone known as Ruth. <clears throat> yeah, and she was a sister, you know, to me and to the Mechlin. We were sisters. And um, she was one of these, like, really, really powerfully right, like the big sister who's always right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you won. <laughs> oh, Johanna, you know, why do you always have to be like, you know, Johanna, come up here and sit down. Or, oh, Johanna, why are you eating, Johanna? Why are you sleeping? Johanna, you can't channel all day. You have to eat and sleep and be in your body. And well, pretty much me this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you need this. <laughs> it's like yeah. she was coordinating before. Oh, it's just breathe. It's going to be okay. We don't have to be dramatic. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing now. <laughs> Um, and I knew Ani in that timeline as Mary Magdalene. So I've also known Ani as Isis. Um, I've known Ani in some Egyptian lifetimes when I was Bastet and she was Hathor. Um, yes. I've known Ani, uh, I've known these sisters many, many times. Many yeah, times. many, many, many times. <laughs> Every timeline that we look, that there, there is you. So <laughs> we choose to keep, you know, coming and remembering, I think, yeah. which I like. Right? <laughs> well, clearly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> obviously. Okay, um, next question is from Corey. She says, I have been feeling I need to fast, but I don't know why. Can uh, either of them explain why I would need to do this? <laughs> I was just thinking that you would say something. <laughs> I was just waiting. <laughs> Let me see. Mary Magdalene is talking about your body have that your body have been going through so many changes energetically and so many downloads that you're receiving and so much that you are becoming aware of that he wants a break. So I think that that's what your body is telling you primarily is that you just want to be present with yourself and chill, you know, and it's translating like that to you. So it might be a little bit of that. And also she's talking about how all of those downloads and those aspects of yourself that you're beginning to really channel sometimes they f the body feels heavy when you're trying to do that 
and it wants you to stop eating for a certain period of time, you know, but I think that you are the best person to talk about that, Pamela, because I've known that you, you fast sometimes for channelings and stuff. Yeah, I fast a lot. Uh, people get like really worried about how much I fast, um, but I, it didn't just happen. See, the primary focus of fasting is just to purge yourself and purify. And it's a, for me, is sacred alchemy. You know, ancient mystery school teachings in association with fasting that involve preparing for different mm -hmm. ceremonies and different rites and initiations um, that are really powerful that prepare you to purify your, your body. When you purify your body, your mind just naturally follows. And if you purify your mind, then your body wants to naturally purify itself um, as represented by shamanism, you know, all the time mm -hmm. and inner child work, people say, oh, I just can't eat or I wanna puke or I'm nauseous, whatever. And the body just does that naturally. So um, the biggest misperception that I noticed about fasting is that people just wanna jump straight to water. Okay. Or they just want to say, I don't need water, you know, and it was very detrimental when a lot of the breatharian beliefs came about when they were like, just go. And people did not really practice the alchemy of breatharianism, which I did. I deeply went into and observed and practiced. And I still observed that the human conscious collective is not ready to only have like nothing, just light yeah. and air. And it's just not possible. We're not at that level. Um, if you have a body, you need water. You mm -hmm. need water. Um, so don't put yourself physiologically in danger or mentally in danger by doing these things. So basically there is uh, what I call um, circling in fasting. So I'll draw it for you real quick. The majority of society eat this, meat and potatoes and bread. <laughs> all for real meat potatoes bread <laughs> okay um go outside of that just a little bit when you're fasting by adding veggies and fruits okay and eliminate this and this but you can have still some rice cooked cooked raw so you notice I have one raw thing and then everything else is cooked. You can't just go raw. Your body will detox so much. I call this toxicity overload that you'll just dump your toxins, which by the way, is physiologically and mentally dangerous. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to go to the next circle of the fasting. And then we're going to go to eliminate the rice and start going into veggies cooked. We still have one cooked. And then we have fruits, nuts, seeds, and maybe another oatmeal if you need it. And that's a question mark. So the oatmeal is sort of like another thing if you need it. So we have a cooked and then we have um, raw, raw, raw. We have three raw here. We had two raw foods last time. So we have three raw, one cooked. And if you still need it, we're going to be gentle to ourselves and add some oatmeal. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go, you see what I'm doing? We're going to the next step. And then we're going to go to greens that are raw. We're going to add more raw and we're going to have like um, raw veggies and salads and greens, raw fruits and, and nuts and seeds. Um, and then if you need something, I want you to add some tea with honey. Okay, so we did a little bit of replacement. We, we, we had oatmeal in the last circle. So this time, if we need something, we're gonna add tea with honey. So we have raw veggies, raw fruits, nuts, and seeds. And if we need something, not oatmeal, not a grain, but tea with honey. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? I'm going to eventually circle all the way up to tea with honey and lemon, and then water with lemon and honey if, if needed. But I'm going to eliminate, 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 eliminate. I'm going to go all the way up to fruit and veggie juices only, and then fruit juices only, and then eventually water with honey or tea with honey, and then eventually water and lemon, and that'll be your fast. But you may not ever get there. Your degree of fasting um, from what you and your doctor and your shaman and your medicine woman, whatever you use, would, would help with um, may just be juice fasting, and that would be it for you, and that's great. That's fine. You see, like we have to be gentle about this. Yes. What about the other way around? Like when you stop fasting to start eating again? 
add back in. So then you're going to go back down through the cycle. So we're at um, water with lemon, and then we're going to go to the next circle in, which would be um, herbal tea and honey and lemon if you need. And then we're going to go back into fruit juices only, and then vegetable fruit juices only, you know, and then raw fruits, veggies, nuts, and seeds with some honey. And then you see what I'm doing? I'm circling mm -hmm. back in, but I stop exactly where I need. You don't have to go straight back down to meat and potatoes. Just stop exactly where you need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't go straight to pizza. <laughs> because <laughs> did you lose it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, channels have this thing like we really love food. Like we're like, yeah. Shoot, I'm tired of water <laughs> pizza. Yeah, <laughs> no one's holding me. <laughs> oh, we regret it so badly. We regret it so badly. <laughs> every time. Um, something that Mary wanted me to mention was that something very important. She's saying it is that if the reason for you just pay attention, if the reason for you to fast is not because you're punishing yourself. Just be aware mm -hmm. of that because it's so important. If you are using that as a means to punish yourself, then don't do it at all because it's not going to do you any good. I've noticed there's a deep association of the guilt and shame frequencies that mm -hmm. are involved in channels and healers in particular that come from either conscious or unconscious eating disorders. It's just mm -hmm. really, really prevalent. You know, so it's just something to be aware of that it can be there that you and an eating disorder is not necessarily what you always think it is like for me it, it's like when i struggle with it and i still do but not in a way of like a conditioning but mostly just like i love food and i don't want to stop eating it <laughs> so some people yeah. would call that a food attachment <laughs> so i'm like i'm upset pizza yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> so that is an attachment but not necessarily yeah. a disorder but some people will go in the opposite realm where they will um say, you know, I don't deserve food right now. Like right. they were literally their inner child will go into worthiness issues with food. And that's not a good reason to fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just by talking about food, I already think of food and like, yay, food. <laughs> yay. We're all thinking, what are we going to eat? Yeah. Yeah. Already thinking about dinner. I said pizza, like, oh, there's frozen pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and no. I feel like sometimes when I channel and, and when it's uh, like very demanding energetically, that food helps me ground in a way. So maybe that's another thing that, you know, my, my brain is telling me that it helps, but I feel like, okay, so I want to, I want to eat some, chips. I don't know. Yeah. Chips now <laughs> because I can't, <laughs> you know, so no, not the healthiest. Yeah. You know, that's how some yogis actually sit in their bodies. That's how um, I think, what is his name? Uh, Ramakrishna did not have all of these tools accessible to him. He was not a very educated yogi. And I was in a lifetime with him and I would observe him in that lifetime. Um, <clears throat> kind of just the way he stayed in the body after realization was grounding through food. Yeah. And I remember he told his wife, he was like, if I stop eating, um, it's kind of my thing. Like, I, I don't really know how to stay in the body. So food is how I ground myself. So if I turn food away, you know, I only have a few days to live. That's how tight he was with food. Wow. So grounding <laughs> or channels uh, is very, very important, whether it's food or not, as long as we're not just punishing oh, yeah. ourselves with it or something. Uh -huh. um, and I'm the same way a little bit as that teacher. Like, I love food. And if I turn away food, something's wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me too yeah I can be sick like I feel like I'm dying but I'm still hungry you know so mm. that's something that I right I say. if I if I'm not feeling hungry it's like oh my god I'm gonna die <laughs> yeah. yeah I remember I had meningitis once that was a real big struggle oh my god yeah, I, have, I have fought off so oh my god <laughs> yeah, yeah I had viral meningitis and I'm sitting there and I'm just like in and out of death you know and the doctor is like yeah we're not sure and I open up my eyes and I'm like lasagna <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing you back it's like oh i'm not God. living they have lasagna okay. on earth you know? <laughs> he's like give her lasagna because she can't this is ridiculous he's, she's like give her lasagna <laughs> oh, oh my god yeah that every, is crazy every time i eat it i say that's why i'm here <laughs> because of the food um how how are we with time we're good you're good okay the next question is, astrology indicates there will be a major event in January 2020 that will create a big jump towards heaven on earth. Any advice on how to prepare for it? Uh, 
Are you are you dodging triggers too? <laughs> <laughs> I think we both arrived at the same time. <laughs> oh god. Okay, Lilith said, "How many more years are you still going to be here while looking for something disastrous that has happened already?" The event happened in 2012. It's done. It is it, it open. These galactic portals open. So much life came in, so much catastrophe happened, but then the rest of what you call ascension is a subtle, subtle, subtle shift within you. Everything that was supposed to happen on earth already has happened. You're not going anywhere. Earth is not going to blow up, she says. <laughs> <clears throat> so yes. how many more years are we going to keep looking um, towards that? Because Lilith kind of gives me this image of myself as Lilith with like my hair up in like an obnoxious ponytail, like popping bubble gum in my mouth obnoxiously. And I'm like, still here. <laughs> <laughs> so, cause she can be obnoxious like that. And um, it's just, we are still gonna be here and we'll be living to tell it. And it won't be anything earth shaking. There will be some major political changes and changes in religion and more freedom, but we mm -hmm. are in 4D that fourth density, you know, primarily earth is close to 70% in fourth dimension right now, according to what the, the raw collective just presented to me in my channels on Patreon just last week. Yes. So we have four to 5D right now going on primarily. We only have like 40% of earth still in third. And I know that sounds like a big percentage, but we had a tipping point already. And we've been gradually unshedding and unveiling and just expanding in ways that are safer. They're just emotionally hard. So these big changes that we all keep looking for out here, here yeah. we're going through hell in here right now. <laughs> and heaven, <laughs> some of us are in heaven. So, um, you know, it, it just depends upon where you are and what density you're experiencing. Yeah. Mary was just saying that, what if you choose it to be now? Your heaven, your whatever it is that you want to be there. What if you choose and they just say that it's going to be now? Changes everything. Eva asks, um, can Mary explain why so much, so many rose quartz appear so my way? It's her essence in you, she's saying. She, she, it's her favorite one, one of her favorite ones. Uh, so it's just your own Mary Magdalene coming to you and telling you that she's there, you know, ready to work with whatever a rose quartz represents to you. It's most important part, she's saying. So whatever it is that it represents to you personally, that's something that is right there for you to grab. Uh, Lilith said, we create synchronicities based upon what little our minds will actually grasp, believe, and hang on to. So for some of you, it's the feathers. When the angels talk, for some of you, it's numbers because that captures their attention. For some of you, it's crystals. For some of you, it's dropping pennies. Whatever it is, your minds will actually believe because you're so conditioned to believe that, that God must be outside and an evidential sign out here that's so different from you. So the angels um, that you have created in your, you know, illusions, they, they respond to that. And, and you create that for yourself to capture your attention back to yourself. And it's the only thing you'll believe. So that's what it is. It has to be that clear to you in an external sign, or you won't grasp it. You won't take it in. Yeah. <clears throat> Not just her. She said, this is like a message yeah. for anyone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, Katya asks, what is the meaning of sleep paralysis and are incubi real? Incubi? Incubi? I, I think they, um, that's plural for the word incubus. Okay. Which is, you know, also synonymous with the word succubus, which is also synonymous with the word demon. And we could just keep going okay. and keep going. I think that's what she means. And in certain people's uh, dreams and illusions, they are very real in their creative environments. And those castings and negative spells and dark entities, the more real you make them, the more power they have and the more real they become in your unreal creative environment, Lilith says. So that's for that. I didn't hear what she said about the other one else. Well, some, there was some other question within that. <clears throat> 
Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Like what is the meaning of sleep paralysis? Oh, is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so again, Lula says again, for what you can handle, your brain has a narrow capacity based upon programmed conditioning and you choose to shut yourself down if you're going to see or feel or sense something that's outside the parameters of your brain's reference points of safety. So when this happens, your brain physiologically floods the body with chemicals and literally those chemicals are uh, paralyzing in nature. This is physiological response. It's not a spiritual problem. Your body is shutting down because your brain will freak out and you will go into a likely psychosis over what you will see that you cannot handle. Okay, um, not just what you will see, perhaps an extraterrestrial being, you know, you're one of those who watch too many movies, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, some belief systems that um, certain visions would trigger. Um, <clears throat> some people are part in their unveiling and their illusions of abduction experiments and things of that nature, but they're not consciously prepared to handle that they signed a contract to create in that way. So the brain will shut the body down so that there isn't physical pain in those other re parallel realms during those experiences. So there isn't pain. Um, and yes, that is an experiment that you chose to be a part of because you're gods and you cannot be a part of anything that you did not choose. The end, Lilith says. Yeah. So if you don't like the dream that you created for yourself, make your contract null and void, call back your sovereignty and remember who you are and just end that contract, end that part of your dream. Don't believe it anymore if you're one of those in those experiments. As simple as that. It's that alchemy of sovereignty. This is why I teach alchemy because it calls you back to your sovereignty. So there's that. Um, but yeah, it's, there's many reasons for sleep paralysis, but it is physiological and you choose it. Nothing is holding you. It's like a defense mechanism of the body. Yeah. Next question is from Julie. She says, I've have, I have learned so much about the Ashra this year that I feel this Christmas season is a little different for me energetically and maybe for others here as well. Is there a message for the collective group of light workers that we can focus on this month in place of the traditional Judeo-Christian message of Christmas? He woke me up with that today and he said choose to celebrate the Christ in you and that's my message for the collective in this time as everyone is so focused on Christmas and and the belief is so strong and all that use that all of that culmination of energy to celebrate the Christ in you so that's the best thing that you can do on Christmas Um, yeah, well, I have been getting that message from Halal significantly. And he said, <clears throat> what about that morning? What about the morning before Christmas Eve? What about New Year's Day? What about all the things that we attribute these associations and, and memory patterns with? So what about every morning we celebrate? Rise every yes. morning into your bodies and out of your beds and into your lives and simply say, Okay, um, how does the divine want me to be present today? How is the divine present? Um, so just being aware of how you want to be present. You know, and you can change that. You can, how can I celebrate myself today? How can I be more loving today? How can I forgive today? Um, you can change that every day, but primarily when you're aware enough to celebrate every day and you wake up and you ask, how can I celebrate this day? Um, how you're supposed to celebrate that day and your contracts will come. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you, you are in 100% alignment with your higher self, with God within you, once you decide to simply celebrate yourself and love yourself. So, yeah, beautiful. Next question is from Paulette. She asks, how can I abandon all thoughts of fear and separation and relax, surrender into trust of a loving universe? Lilith says, it's only the spell that your mind has you under when your mind turns against you that believes itself to be a body, that believes itself to be a uh, 
victim to suffering that believes itself to be a personality and mind body construct. It's only this spell of illusion that the mind presents that does this and it creates suffering. It creates doubt. It creates illusion. So how about starting by undoing the belief that you are a mind body construct, your mind and your body are tools. And when they are turning against you, you have been given a very delicate, transformational, sophisticated, complicated tool. So she gives me this image of, who is this Lamborghinis today? I got, <laughs> I got the Lamborghini in the garage and I'm like, do, do you realize that if you put a Lamborghini in my garage, I'm going to tell you to take it back. <laughs> so she switched it with a Humvee. So I'm happy now. <laughs> so I'm looking at my shimmery uh, hum Humvee there. And she goes and she opens the dash, you know, in the, in the glove box there. And she pulls out an owner's manual and she slaps it in my lap. Now I'm sitting in, in my vision now, I'm sitting in front of the driver's seat and I'm like revving on the gas. I'm like, let's go. And she's like <laughs> tapping like this. I'm tapping right now. <laughs> and she's like, you're going to read it? Your spiritual practice is your owner's manual, your breath, your meditation, your thought and frequency management. This is your owner's manual. So get to know the body and the mind, these complicated tools. Before you drive your car, read the owner's manual and everything else that you want. This is all the other powerful things that you're asking for right now. These are powerful things, but you can't skip the owner's manual. And then go drag racing. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, who needs that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. That's Everybody how we goes to a car. You know, when the car is on the side of the road, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then you hit a tree and you go like, oh, why is this happening to me? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's, it's just, you, you know, and the other things, she gives other examples, like you're putting bad gas yeah. to the gas, into the gas chamber. Mm -hmm. So what they need, what she means by that is bad thoughts, negative thoughts, shame-based mm -hmm. thoughts, fear-based thoughts, or food. <laughs> hmm. so when you're doing that um, and putting like yucky stuff into the gas tank of the car and then wondering why it doesn't, you know, you don't give it oil. You don't put oil in your car. What do you think is going to happen? So her metaphor in that is water. You need water mm -hmm. to oil the engine of the brain and the body and everything. So basically speaking, all these things that people want about self-love and realization and, and the cities and opening up all the psychic abilities, all of that is secondary. It, it just happens or doesn't, but it will happen more efficiently and safely um, and more productively if people just pay attention to the body and the mind and treat them well. Yes. Next question is from Maria. She asks, my hands have been tingling with electrical energy for over a week. It feels like an activation. For what? <laughs> Mary is saying it matters not for what it is. Um, the meaning you give, the meaning humans give, and if it's simply God working through you, God is neutral. So what do you want to choose to bless with your hands? And what are you ready to bless with your hands? And then she shows me like she's doing this with her hands and then she's turning it here. So bring that to you first. If you want that, if there's anything that you want blessed outside, it needs to start with you. Yeah. Yeah, Lilith definitely nods a lot and also follows up with um <clears throat> it can be a bit of a intellectual block when the intellect gets too much involved into overly defining oh placing so many labels upon the energy of god as it flows through us yes so if we get out of your own way and let it flow through we don't need to know oh by the way this is a kundalini rising from the first chakra going up into the earth star system chakra and i just made that up <laughs> you know what that is <laughs> you know so that we can activate all of our cities so that we can uh, really your mind's thinking too much already yes 
really, and then nothing's getting done because you're like, oh yeah, ha ha, that's awesome. I'm awesome. You know, ego likes to be fed that way with all of these spiritual definitions and tools and extrapolations that are just distractions from God just wanting you to get out of your own way and go bless yourself in the world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Elizabeth asks, how to experience being in love without expectation or attachment? <sighs> Mary is giving me one sentence, being in love with yourself. And then she's doing like this and giving you the microphone, Pamela. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got so distracted with triggers. Can you read the question again? Yes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> How to experience being in love without expectation or attachment? Lilith states, I wish for you to look at every attachment and every expectation as if you don't have it and never will right now. I'm stripping it from you. Now what? What if you have no choice because all of the ways that you expect to be loved are not being met right now and no one is going to love you or save you but you what then what then what if there is no one else what then if in order to learn what it feels like because in all fairness you've been taught love from mothers if you were meant to love yourself first you would not be born with mothers so Go mother someone. You don't know what it's like to be loved? Go give, serve, be the most compassionate, loving being for others. Be for others what you wish to have for yourself so that you divinely remember this reference point of what it feels like to mother and be mothered. Formulate the reference point by serving and giving yourself and others. It will come naturally. There is no blueprint for this. I cannot formulate a roadmap for self-love, but taking care of the mind, taking care of the body and serving first will bring you there. That's why she gave you the microphone. Hmm. I suppose. Um, and it's interesting that that happened because I was a person who confused service with sacrifice. Oh yeah, so me too. A way to get love in my life, what I would do, and I had, I have an amazing mother, so I have no excuse, right? <laughs> I would just be like, I'm going to mother everybody and love everyone the way that my mom loves me. And my mom is perfect. Okay. <laughs> so the way that no one's going to love me the way that my mom loves me. So when it came to partnerships, I realized that I had this expectation of everyone to be like my mom, everyone to perfectly love me and to be like, my daughter is the shit. And if you don't like it, get that <laughs> out. <laughs> this is how my mom loves me. She's like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> like my mom is so biased. <laughs> so, she's your mom. <laughs> yeah. So she's like my ultimate divine protector. She's amazing. You know, my ultimate cheerleader, everything, every practice I ever had. I was a prodigy as a child, as a musician, and she was there traveling the world for me and competitions and everything for me. She did three jobs so I could afford to be in these competitions, like everything. So I lost, I decided that I would stop expecting people to love me the way that my mom loves me, for one, because it's just way too fucking perfect. <laughs> And then secondly, I started loving myself the way that my mom loves me. And I started standing up for myself the way that my mom stands up for me. And I started being that for myself just naturally because of her example, okay? And then I stopped confusing service with sacrifice. If I served and someone went, ooh, then I went, oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Instead of trying to change, trying to overly sacrifice, trying to just be like, oh, I'm doing something wrong, so I'll do it differently and get them to love me more. No, empaths, you are sympathing. I know because I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, sympathy <laughs> is not empathy. Look at the, even, even the Webster def definition will tell you a, a distinct difference between sympathy and empathy, okay? So let's not pull in new age definitions to this empaths of, oh, I'm picking up on someone else's feelings. Lilith will call you on that. There is no someone else. They are all you. They're bringing you back to how you feel about yourself, 
or how you feel about them is something that you're teaching them, but there's still a past version of you or a present version of you right now. It could be a potential of a future version of you, that capacity for a future version of you if they're giving you complete love, you know, or perhaps if you're not ready and you don't, you, you deem yourself unworthy, they could be showing you just the opposite. And that could be an unfortunate future capacity of you. But regardless, I just stopped having expectations for how other people love me. And when that happened, it's so yeah. powerful. I think that's the most important thing. It's not expecting, not having that set in your mind. And we see that so much in our society, like in movies and books and how love is supposed to be. And we expect that to be like that. And if love shows itself to you in your face and it's there and it's present, it's awesome however long it's gonna last we don't appreciate it because we want that version that we made up so yeah yeah and then you know what lilla says you know what they say about assuming <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so i so we just don't one of my rules about love self-love and love as a whole towards others is that i never make assumptions it doesn't matter how many times someone says i'm gonna do this or i'm gonna do that i'm like okay great <laughs> <Show it. Yes. laughs> it's a great way to live <laughs> because you're always in the present yeah awesome um i'm not gonna dare to say this name because you know what me. name sishi sishi siki uh, no um, yeah the, this question <laughs> <laughs> leave her to her spiraling <laughs> Um, does the recognition of an awareness of love during sex make sex sacred or else? Sex is always sacred. She, that's the first thing that she said. It depends on where you're putting your awareness on. And mm -hmm. she says that there's more. There's more. All is love. So how to recognize and be aware uh, love within all situations and beings, even the non-sacred ones or naughty situations? Now she's talking about acceptance. That's how you recognize love as being all. And it comes with so many other tools that you can use to help yourself recognize that. And it comes, she's saying that the first thing is you. So what is it in you that you call unloving or there you call bad or there you call ugly or whatever it is in you right now that you feel like it's not love. It, it, it doesn't represent love. So work with that. And how does that show itself to you? And how is it serving you in the moment? And if it is serving you in the moment. So there's just so many processes that you could choose to, to, to partake in, to just uh, awaken that in you and awaken that awareness in you. Uh, she was also talking about something else that I got super distracted, but a, a, a flicking light in my mm -hmm. life right now. So something just blipped there. So mm -hmm. what was the second thing that he asked again, please? Um, with all situations, even no sacred ones or naughty situations. Okay. She's talking about naughty situations and what you uh, deem as naughty situations and being more... She's saying that that's where we get this so much. It's like she's giving me a book, you know, it's like a whole class mm -hmm. of information. It's just so much to express right now. But the way that we learned to view sex as being something bad, it, as it keeping you away from a part of you that was innate to you in your humanity, and that brings you to not appreciate the body fully and then to talk to yourself and to others about things being naughty and things being dirty and wrong and ugly, you know? So she's saying that it all culminates in, in loving yourself and accepting yourself in everything that you are. So she's saying that that's the easier answer that I could give you right now. And she's making my whole body burn because it's some of the things that I'm here to teach and I get very passionate about it. So I think I'll, I'll just stop here because I'm just, you know, <laughs> he's spiraling too. I get so confused about the second half of that question. Can it just be read again? Yes. Thanks. Um, all is love. So how to recognize and be aware of love within all situations and beings, even the non-sacred ones or the naughty situations? That's my point. The non-sacred, that, that doesn't exist. I think that that's what's... So how to recognize love in all situations, even mm -hmm. the non-sacred? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so what Lula says, whatever we're judging is non sacred, mm -hmm. and you view that as their sovereignty in their version of love. If you don't view it as sacred, and perhaps they do, that is a discrepancy of opinion and perspective. And the only way to differentiate sacred and non sacred is is someone being harmed or not? If no one's being harmed, if something's consensual, then you can assume that there's something sacred going on. <laughs> so let's just start there <laughs> um, because it is the joining and the merging. And she said, and also, I want you to look deeply at your judgments, your beliefs that cause such judgments of non-sacred versus sacred and naughty or good. So we have these polarities again, and where is your shifting and blending of the polarities and balance of them? Um, there's something else though. She wants to talk about the definition of sex. And she said, why does everyone assume that sex means joining of bodies? Yeah. Sex is simply a joining in every sacred aspect. And if one creative spark wishes to join with another creative spark, that is sex. So uh, why do we make it about our body parts? Why do we have such a strict definition as being something with our genitals all the time? <sighs> so just start there and the rest will become apparent to you. <clears throat> exactly. And that was the word that was missing in my sentence. Consensual sex is always sacred. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just that is someone being harmed or not? Um, mm -hmm. If no one is being harmed emotionally or physically, and she means on all levels, she mm -hmm. means all the buried pain that you might be experiencing if you are feeling like you're being um, harmed and you're not speaking a truth about it and merging anyway. She means all of these scenarios. So this is why sex is sacred, sacred, and you um, can understand by just going deeply into even the definition of that. What is it to you? What do you yeah. want it to mean to you? So why do we join with body parts first? Why not join with the essence of our spirits? And the, the breath. Yeah, yeah. The essence in so many ways of our spirits and our commonalities and um, our sacred paths together. Um, so there's other ways to join. Like we don't need to start with something that's extraneous and just a, a nice representation of what's inside anyway. Start with what's inside. Yes. Next question is from Alana. And she asks, what do Lilith and Mary Magdalene have to say about virginity and so ties when you are sexually intimate, intimate with people? Soul ties. Soul ties. Okay. Virginity and soul ties? Yes. I would love to know what Lilith is saying about that. <laughs> she said there have been so many associations of virgin or not, and virgins associated with sacrifices, virgins associated with purity or not if they aren't, virgins associated with being worthy if they are or not if they aren't, when are you going to even stop asking that question? I am done, she said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Mary was Mary was saying, uh, referencing what you said about sex not being only the joining of the body. So there are so many levels of virginity then, you know, and we keep focusing only on that of the body. And she's talking about how that being more of a, uh, Turning sex, however it is that it means to you, into something present in your awareness as sacred and not worrying too much about the physicality of it. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that that's all that she, she has to say about the, the... Was there something else that she asked? Oh, she just answered the soul yeah. ties, how you connect to other being and all of that. Um, next question is from Ashraf. What is consciousness and how can we achieve cosmic consciousness? She says consciousness is the awareness that you are divine and nothing but. 
consciousness is simply awareness that you are the spark of life that is present within the all. It's nothing to be reached. It's something to be aware of, to be awakened to its truth, to experience and to create from, and then to expand within and then collapse into and expand again. Um, next question. How to love, acknowledge, and accept our dream of the ego judgments in our daily life? I realize my spiritual ego have judgments towards my judgments and ego. If I can acknowledge and love them. I didn't Your understand face. anything. <laughs> Lilith went. Lilith said, so. <laughs> she said, so. We have the grand judger here with his arms placed up to judge. A nice little frowny face. Maybe some spiky hair because he's pissed. And then we have the judger who's pointing his little finger at the judger, who's pointing his little finger at the judger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all one being and you're complicating things. Your ego is brilliant if you're complicating things this much. So I would like to ask you to simplify your theory because it's only one judger. There's nothing to judge because those judgments aren't true. So can we ask the question again in this way? What are we really judging? We're judging something that isn't real because the only thing that is real is love. Love it. Yeah. She made it so simple. My mind was going like all over the place. Like I can't understand what, <laughs> what was being asked. Um, she wants to stop judging her judgments and the fact that she judges. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like an infinite mm -hmm. cycle. Got it. Mm. Just a second, because I just lost it. Okay. I can't see anything from here. I think we are on the last question. Okay. I don't know if she can hear us. I think she can. Okay. So <laughs> the question is, when our earth life is over, can anyone with the inclination hang out with your tribe? I think Lily's, Lily's tribe or Mary Magdalene's tribe. Oh. See, like maybe, after maybe we the, die, we can go hang the out with them. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, they give me a little bit of a mind fuck sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> when the question is perceived from a separated point you know i don't know if that happens to you sometimes and then i try to meet them at they are with the question so then i ask again and mary is saying that obviously because we are our uh, we are your tribe and you are ours and we live in you so whenever you release this body that we are all using to do stuff and to uh, experience on earth we will be living with you you never left the tribe you know we are here with you all the time and whenever you are ready to go to another experiment or whatever it is that you want to call we'll all be there for you again and again and again because we are all one i hope that answered the questions <clears throat> um lilith said and yes and why can't you hang out now <laughs> yeah <laughs> why not now why do we have to be once we're out of creative body yep yep yeah so now the, the last last question <laughs> um, from duda she asks i want to help i want help to know how can i work with my sacral chakra what do i need to forgive or to do to heal What do I need to forgive or what? Or to, or to do to heal the sacral chakra. <laughs> so many answers and no answers at all, right? Um, Mary's talking about something that Isis uh, said in one of our channelings. 
And she said that choose a process, honor the process, and then release the process, be done with the process. So if that's uh, something that you feel inclined to do, whatever it is, like working with Yoni eggs, for example, something that is very practical, that you can set all of your intentions and in, something that is in physicality that can help you work with anything that you feel like it's not uh, balanced in your body, then work with that, honor that process, and then just be done with the process because otherwise we're going to be doing it again and again and again. Uh, but then Yeshua comes and he says that you are always whole, always holy, always divine. There is nothing for you to change in yourself. So then Lilith comes and she comes with, that's when you embrace acceptance. So it's just, where are you in all of those uh, nuances of yourself? And what are you willing to work with right now? What is the best for you? Something that is very personal to, to each one of us, you know? So yeah, I forgot the last part of the question though. Yes. She's telling me to go back to that. Mm -hmm. What do I need to do to forgive or heal? What if you start believing that there is nothing left to forgive or to do to heal? That's it. Yeah. Lilith says sometimes for some people, that's a hard jump because they're so addicted to suffering and so addicted to shaming themselves into believing that they are worthy of that suffering and unworthy of that forgiveness. So we, can we start with just uncovering the beliefs that you've created, which have caused the mind to insanely attach to unworthiness and shame and persecution. So when's the last time you felt unworthy, ashamed and persecuted? You can probably say sometime yesterday. Maybe you'll say now. Go into that and do any process, just like Ani said, any process, but getting into that energy just so that you can bring it into your awareness of what happened, where you forgot your divinity, where you forgot your pure nature, That because grace is pure and it is a gift. It is not earned, Yeshua states. So that's, the truth of grace and being that that's the truth, that it's a gift. Why do we need to be worthy? Why do we need to suffer to get it? You don't need to. So go into that state of innocence. It's not necessarily that, like, as Annie says, you, you need to forgive it. It's just that you need to be aware that it happened, that you began to experience these beliefs and then apply the process. Because what I find, and I'm really with Annie on this, and Lilith really guides me in this direction a lot, is that we have so many processes and, and Annie is a process person. She'll give you, and I am too. We have thousands of processes that we, we're, we're ancient mystery school teachers from these times me and other times, you know, at every around the world. I've taught mystery schools in this lands and in many lands. So, and then I got to the point where I just said, okay, when, are, when is humanity going to stop starting with a process? It's yeah. just backwards. We need to start with the feelings, start with the suffering, start with the belief and forgive the fact that the belief is there. That's it. You just forgive the fact that you held the belief for so long because you continue to persecute yourself. And then that's it. Just forgive the fact that you hold the belief in general and forgive the belief itself. If you're going to forgive anything. Okay. And then you can apply processes, you know, then you can go. Yeah into any process you want and it will be a thousand times more um, effective and then let it go because a lot of people make this uh, misperception in healing they will go through all this sit with their inner child do the work do the process and then come back to me and say but I still feel that way well it goes tricky in that way just because you integrated something doesn't mean that karma won't come right back around and look you in the face and say do you want to play with me again this is what karma does because the mind does that and says, oh, there's that lesson of shame again that you already did. Do you want to play deeper? Do you want to integrate it deeper? Acknowledge that that feeling is there. You're not bypassing anything, but then choose again. Yeshua says this through Annie, through myself, through so many people time and time again, that you simply need to be aware of what you feel forgiven and make another choice. That's all that it is. You are in control of what you think, what you feel, what you say and thereby what you do and create from. Exactly. And honor yourself wherever you are within all that just that we just said. Wherever you are in all of those processes within the process, just honor yourself and then choose again. Because uh, the it's other- So important. Yeah. You have to keep choosing, keep choosing, keep choosing. I don't know about you, but Annie, um, but do you find that 
um, people come and they do some work and they come in again and they're like, well, a different level of that same feeling came. Well, that is your degree of thought and frequency management. You know, in yoga, we call that pratyahara, just being aware of the energy that you need to draw back from, you know, um, yeah. or draw in with positive energy. But when something's too much in your energy field that you take control of that with breath, meditation, and proper spiritual practice. Exactly. Because there's sometimes, again. sometimes something shows up just to make sure that you're done with it. And you can say, okay, thank you very much, but I'm very done with it. I don't want to take any of this anymore, you know, or you can just choose another process and go through another process, you know? So yeah, happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just this endless wheel of, you know, re-traumatizing the situation. And it feels so disempowering. It does. Like you never were good enough to finish it. So no, let's finish it right now. Let's choose again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That's all. Do they have anything else they'd like to share to the collective maybe or any final message? Um, how do I put that into? So I want to talk about sacred humility. I want to talk about the difference between shame and meekness and the power of sacred humility. Um, I'd like to talk to talk about how that relates to service and that you cannot be powerfully serving this world without first and simultaneously powerfully serving yourselves. Humility is realizing that ego cannot awaken itself. That's all that sacred humility is, that you can't do it alone, that you need others and others need you. Humility, sacred humility involves connection. Connection is the reason why you serve and it is the reason why you are on this planet. Holy Spirit is the great comforter, the essence of spirit, whatever you call it, higher self, all of your words. I call spirit the comforter. And the comforter is this power, this knowingness, this agency given by grace that knows how to bring you home and will always guide you there. So when you feel that you are not home, call upon the comforter within you and remain humble. About 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah, the little voice. I love her. <laughs> Yeah. Speaking um, Flavia's language, she was mm. talking about pizza. Hmm. Flavia even woke up here like, yes, <laughs> me. <laughs> had a profound spiritual message and then pizza. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Her little reflection just arrived and you know, our ego is a reflection. <laughs> <laughs> so lovely. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a pillow. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I was no. just going to say that this message has been coming up a lot. That is choosing a teacher that sometimes it is very, very, very necessary for us right now mm -hmm. to just trust that someone will hold your hand and help you, guide you towards yourself and not towards them or their beliefs or whatever it is that they are trying to indoctrinate you with but you like bringing yourself back to you and just your awareness of the God that you always are. So they've been telling me that's a, that a lot, like choose a teacher. 
Pizza, now. pizza yes. <laughs> I want pizza too, Emmy. <laughs> okay, we get it. She normally wouldn't be eating at 3 p.m. I know. I know you're hungry. I'll be right there. Why did you say hungry a lot a few minutes ago and I didn't do anything? Because I was still busy. <laughs> Why did you say hungry? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Um, so that's it, I believe. And did, would you like to say something? Or? No, I was just going to say you guys can find, you know, Flavia and Annie and all of their powerful alchemy work and beautiful Magdalene processes and channelings. I think they're doing like six channelings this month. Oh my gosh. It's like a yeah. lot. Um, on patreon.com forward slash lightworker613. And you can find all of my work in the library of, gosh, I don't know how many channels we have right now, over 100. Oh, God. Yeah, on so um, patreon.com forward slash Pamela Erlin. Yes. And we both do individual sessions as well. Yes. So we'll yeah. Inquire about that. And Annie, it, I can definitely attest for either of these beautiful teachers, you know, both Annie and Flavia. So if your heart calls, go to them. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> thank you very much that yeah. was a lot of fun and you have some amazing things coming in your yes. patron i'm so excited this for month. the classes yeah. so freaking excited yeah. can't wait in the course in forgiveness <laughs> yes ah oh, that's gonna be so, so i'll be teaching yeah. on my book itself which is just you know just now being written and it's only about i think it's about three quarters of the way through so I'd say we're not yeah. quite there yet. And every time I get done, they're like, well, just teach that. We'll finish yeah. that later. <laughs> You're teaching it. So you'll get a lot of behind the scenes things and yes. get some pre-release things with my album coming up real soon too on December the 12th. Yes, ma'am. I don't know where the cat is. <laughs> Probably eating grace. He's yes. in trouble. <laughs> okay. So thank you, thank you very, very much. <laughs> I got two. Oh my gosh, I forgot to yes. tell you. Pre release yes. on December the 12th to patrons only, and um, the full release of my long album. I did a short one last time that's on all in you know, all music stores and on CD now everywhere. Mm -hmm. But my longer album, which um, I'm really connected to so strongly, called Sacred Songs of the Heart, um, very heart opening, um, is going to be fully released on December 22nd in all stores. Yes, yes. Amazing. If you have any questions, you can email us and I, like us, I mean Pamela, because I answer <laughs> the, the email. Well, it, can, it can be either, either, anyways. But any questions about the album, about how to join Patreon or anything that we can be of help with, just ask away. Yeah. Yeah. Patreon has some of the songs there for listening to, has like quite a few of the songs there already. Mm -hmm. So you got to yeah. you guys got to listen to different versions of the song, like when it was first created, and then it was in pre-production, and then like its final mastery, and then oh we didn't like that, so we fixed this and added that, and you guys were there for me the whole time supporting this album, and thank you so much for your support and watching my creative process, and you got to hear all the stories behind the song. <laughs> I was going through emotionally, and yes, so much, so exciting, so beautiful. We love it so much. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much for having us. It was so much fun. Thank you so much, light workers. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Thank you all you do. For Love me. you. Thank you. Yeah. We wouldn't be here without you. Yes. So, yeah, Thank I you. often feel that way about both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling is beautiful. I love you. I'll see you. Love I you. love you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. <laughs>